is a beautiful country. It's famously known as the land of Kilimanjaro, Serengeti, Ngorongoro crater, of course, of Vigod, Zanzibar, Selu. There are a lot of things that make Tanzania unique. We are keepers of all sorts of world heritage. So many options. You can go to wildlife areas. We have fantastic beaches. We have fabulous islands in Tanzania. Fantastic water bodies. I think we in this country are blessed. We've got the best wildlife. We've got amazing culture. Wow, there's so much to talk about Tanzania. Every region you go, you will always find uniqueness. It is the land everyone would wish to go and stay. People are very friendly, they are very warm, with very nice smiling face and welcoming, very authentic. If you go back into history, our forefathers have set a very solid foundation. Tanzania is a country that has played a crucial role to influence a stability in many other countries. Tanzania got its independence in 1961, and we got our independence peaceful. Our father of the nation, uh, Mwalim Julius Nyerere, declared that uh, we can't be free if the rest of Africa is not free. So soon after our independence, Tanzania adopted a policy of supporting the rest of South African countries, uh, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Namibia, Angola, Mozambique, down to South Africa. Allocate part of its land for the freedom fighters to stay in Tanzania, to contribute to the liberation of other countries in Africa. We were proud of being Tanzanian, a country which was led by Mwalim Nyerere, the icon of this country. The president who has shown without fear, we must do everything by our own. So this is also the spirit of Tanzania. We stand as one. Well. It's an amazing place. It has sort of um, unbounded potential. There's high population growth, there's big plans for development. And I look at the direction of the country where we are headed, and I can only see positive. We are no longer a poor country. We are moving, producing our own things, and also exporting our own things. It's one of the countries in Africa which economically is very, very stable. You have all of the prospects of growing. It is well developed in terms of infrastructure, international airports, good roads. So when that is combined with the abundance of tourist attraction, that makes Tanzania a very good place to live and work. Tanzania is a unique country. We have allocated over 30% of our land for wildlife, for flora and fauna. Tanzania actually protects and conserves a little bit more than 33% of its land. And uh, it is covered by more than 50% by forests. Tanzania is a beautiful country. We have the animals, we have very good and big forest reserves. We have a diversity of wildlife resources and we cannot be compared with any other country regionally or internationally. We have some incredible landscape, whether it is Zanzibar Islands, the lakes that we have, the amazing wildlife that we have, which is probably the best in the world. It's, it's a beautiful country. You've got the mountains, you've got the countryside, the Indian Ocean is beautiful. That is the Serengeti of the terrestrial, it is the Serengeti and Manyaras of the marine conservation. Zanzibar Island, Pemba Island, a fantastic uh, scenery. But Tanzania goes beyond natural heritage. Tanzanian music, Tanzanian film, our political history, our political positioning, cultural heritage that we have. It's very, very important to preserve and to understand our own culture itself. If you look at all these carvings, it shows you the amount of talent we have. The Makonde carvings, the carving of the Shetani, the spirits, the carving of the tree of life, the family tree, the modern abstract. It gives a sort of sense of identity to our country. 
For us, heritage is uh, everything, is a value. We have our food, uh, our aroma, uh, our music, our way of life, how we live. Now, among the efforts that have been put in place is trying to diversify on the number of activities that one can do when they come to Tanzania. So the tourists, when they come, they will visit the national parks. They would also want to visit the area, enjoy the traditional foods. They can buy the local cloth. They can buy any kind of souvenir that are being produced by the local people. Now we're investing towards that direction so that we can improve the experience that a tourist coming to Tanzania would enjoy. We love to see our foreigners come over here and enjoy our country. Wherever you go, you don't feel like a stranger. We're very peaceful. The security is great here. And we welcome any visitors coming to this country and we make them feel at home. Tanzania has a vision, which is our national development vision, it's a vision 2025. We aspire to have a country with high quality of life. We aspire to have a country with a stable economy, with good governance, of course with peace. The feeders are there to show that we are heading into that direction. And it comes into so many ways. The government's putting a lot of money in terms of having a modern infrastructure. The level of investment has never been seen before. The massive projects that are being executed at the moment. The investment climate is also favorable. The business performance in the country is now coming up. You would note that for the past maybe decade or more, GDP growth rate has been above 7%. Tanzania is a green field. I think you'll agree with me that this is probably the best moment to invest in Tanzania. It's the most populous country in East Africa. You have a direct access to over 55 million people. But Tanzania, it's very strategically located. We are being surrounded by eight countries. Maybe six countries are landlocked countries. We are the one to provide a channel we are talking about a market to more than a hundred million people. There's not many parts of the world that have that kind of power. So if you are in a fast-moving consumer goods area or in any business that has huge outreach, you know, Tanzania also provides that kind of opportunity. One of the aspirations of the vision to have a land be society. I think it's very important that will empower more and more people to be able to take advantage of the opportunities that this country has to offer. There's all the potentials there to take things to the next level. I think there are a lot of good policies. The government is receptive to private sector investment. They're trying to work to develop the local industries, to develop uh, local companies. I think they're doing things from all angles. They're not just focusing on one area. The system has been streamlined. The bottlenecks have been addressed. The government now is more proactive. So there are a lot of things that we see much more efficient. We have got right people with right mindset as well. The investors who come make more profit, but also that investment benefits the people. So I believe the time is right to transform Tanzania to its level. We are working today for a better tomorrow. This is just what happens. It's a, it's a trend, it's momentum that you just can't stop. This is the way to go forward. Let's work together. Let's make it possible for the people of Tanzania to achieve their dreams. To attain the aspiration of the Vision 2025, the government uh, has done a lot in terms of uh, delivering projects which are going to affect the people directly. We are investing heavily in, in public infrastructure. If you are going to achieve the goal of being an industrialized country, you need efficient, more reliable transport. 
an investor need to be assured that I can easily uh, you know, do businesses in a friendly environment where infrastructure is not a major challenge. This country has developed very well. We have roads almost connected to each and every region in Tanzania. But now we were embarked in a very huge project, the construction of a new standard railway. From Dar es Salaam to our capital city in Dodoma, in the business city in the capital city, we will spend around three hours. This is the biggest project in Africa, three billion USD, direct fund from the government. The railway is a must for the Tanzania to, to be able to achieve that vision 2025. You are bringing the country a little bit more closer and you are reducing the transaction cost. Tanzania has always been quite important in terms of having a strategic location in uh, East Africa. It's, it's really important, especially in a country of 55 million people, modernize and expand the port. We have to make sure that we're efficient, that our costs are reasonable, and that we are operating in a really transparent, fair, and highly productive way. We've been very much advocating this idea of a one-stop shop, whereas customers can do more and more online, trying to work with stakeholders to reduce bottlenecks. By doing this, we can then help to support more growth in industry. To achieve our national development vision, the Vision 2025, as the country is moving towards industrialization, a lot of energy is needed. The great concern for the national vision is by 2025 to have more than 10,000 megawatts that will be connected to the national grid. The country is delivering several energy projects, including the Kinyerezi. Kinyerezi is a suburb in Dar es Salaam where we are focusing on gas and they have added in enough power into the national grid to service the industrialization that is happening in Tanzania. Because you see, when you have efficient power supply, cost of production comes down significantly. Tanzania is diversifying its energy sources now. We have some minor projects in terms of wind, solar, but the biggest project now is the hydro. The former is Tiglas Gorge, which is now called Julius Nyerere Hydro Power Station. It's a 2,115 megawatts project. The fourth biggest dam in Africa. 2.9 billion USD. I think this amount of electricity in this time, it will make Tanzania is one of the leading countries in all fields. The hydropower project is going to be a game changer. Uh, a game changer in terms of our economy, but also the project is going to conserve the environment in Tanzania. Before the project, the elephants were almost depleted in the area because of poaching. So one significance in terms of conservation is to act as a security buffer zone for the conservation of animals in the refugee. But also the people downstream who are suffering from floods, the dam itself is going to act like a control area. We are proud to work in such project from the day one and increase the prosperity of the people in Tanzania. For such a project you have to work with a high level of engineering and a high level of technology and transfer this experience and knowing how in such projects. The peak will reach around 6,000 labor. At least 80% will come from Tanzania. Tanzania is going to transform its economy through implementing this project. People will be able to afford the price of the power because the price will go down. And that will reduce the level of cutting trees and using charcoal, both in rural and in the urban. Tanzania is also endowed with a lot of natural resources, particularly on the extractive industry. It's a major source of wealth that can really contribute to the aspirations of our 2025 vision. So what we are doing as government is to make sure the natural resources are benefiting the people. The revenue has risen tremendously. 
come 2025 as our vision we will hit the 10% contribution of the mining sector to the GDP. Tanzania is incredibly well endowed with some of the best gold deposits in the world. But we know for sure that there's more to come. Tanzania is largely underexplored and it's a sure bet that you want to be here investing in this country. You have all the mines that other African countries and the rest of the world have, gold, copper, diamonds, but most importantly, Tanzania has Tanzanite. This stone, which is the rarest stone on earth, it's found on those two hills across the Kilimanjaro airport. It's the only place in the world. At last, Tanzania is waking up and taking measures to manage its resources, to develop the country's economy. Integral to our philosophy as a mining company in Tanzania is benefiting our stakeholders. And when we talk about stakeholders, that includes the government, the communities we operate in, our employees and supplier bases. Probably our most valuable asset is our people. Um, we're now at a record high of above 99% Tanzanians in the workforce. They're um, incredibly skilled, they're dedicated, they're honest, they're motivated. But core to that is being able to train, develop and add more skills to this workforce. Nearly half of our employees come from the surrounding communities where our mine is. Empowering is the key word and uh, educating the communities with alternative livelihood programs. At the moment, the government focuses on uh, developing the industrial sector. What does this mean? There should be sufficient access to funding. It is critical to continue to grow and be part of this transformation that is happening in Tanzania. Uh, speaking on the communications area, as of today, the use of ICT equipment in Tanzania is on the very high rise. I think there is a huge opportunity in the Tanzania market. We are going to continuously invest to be able to change lives through technology. The backbone of that is connectivity. We have expanded our 4G network across the different regions in Tanzania. Come 2024, 90% will be covered. Everybody is reached. Uh, one of the key things that we do in Tanzania is to bring digital lifestyle and digital tools for every Tanzanian to use technology as the centerpiece of driving economic development in the country. The communications, especially mobile communication in Tanzania, has been the driver to the digital financial inclusion. In PESA, we're uh, one of the products that we are very proud of in uh, Tanzania. We uh, have so far uh, close to 9 million uh, customers that are using uh, mobile money. 45% of the GDP are being transacted by M-Pesa and that's close to 3 trillion shillings on a monthly basis. We uh, are supporting in a cashless uh, ecosystem in Tanzania from the supplier to the trader all the way down to the consumer. Tigo Pesa is a mobile money platform started as a simple remittance business transferring money from point A to point B. Today it's evolved into a fully fledged financial services provider offering a payment platform for merchants, offering loans and savings. This ecosystem enables people from all parts of the country to get access to financial services that ordinarily they would not have been able to access. I believe there is a lot more that we can do and we can grow these services to make sure that we digitize completely cash in Tanzania. Our Vision 2025 talks about a competitive economy, high quality of life. So every day we are endeavor to transform our life from one stage to the other. Tanzania is, uh, is one of those places that I would say has got everything, right? It's a great place uh, to visit. It's a great place to live in. Uh, there are humongous opportunities, uh, well-established infrastructure. Tanzania is a country that has put in place all that is necessary to secure their interests. There is a lot of excitement, a lot of energy. The government is a very strong government. You see a lot of transparency and a tone set from the top. If you look on the infrastructure being created by the government, building roads, railways, hydropower, 
There's a lot that has been done. So these are reforms with the President Magufuli in power that are really adding up to our economic ability to save the people, transform the country, and making sure that Tanzania, much as we are peaceful, but economically people are also happy.